talk still a lot about how we in Europe see the world, but we seldomly ask how does the world look upon us? How are we seen in the world? What do people or elites in China or Brazil or India think about us and to what extent should it matter to us? I think it should matter a great deal. Let's take the example of Brazil and the environment. I mean, Brazil is saying, you industrialized, you Europeans, at great environmental cost. You know, a lot of destruction um, of the environment in Europe. If you look at European cities at the end of 19th century, you know, smog to the extent that perhaps even in China nowadays, people would say, well, the conditions in London are even worse than in Beijing today. And I've noticed that they are quite miserable in Beijing, the air quality. So they say you industrialized at great environmental cost. And now you tell us, now that so many people are escaping poverty, which is a great thing, that we should, you know, slow down our growth to save the environment. But I find, uh, you know, if you listen carefully to what people from China, India and Brazil are telling us, it always evolves around the idea of double standards. You ask us something, and perhaps you're right in asking it, but you can only ask it if you embody it yourself. And don't ask us anything you don't live yourself. You know, if we want others to be curious about what we are, the least you could do is being curious about what others are. Well, the whole debate, uh, which is also very concrete about sovereignty, is so important. Because if you go to Brazil or to India or China, but also to Russia, for example, you see countries that emphasize their sovereignty a lot. Why? Because they have, of course, a long history behind them of being, you know, at the mercy of others. The colonial um, period, a lot of historical grievances. In China, they speak about uh, a century of humiliation. So it's understandable that they want to be recognized as equal and that they want to protect their sovereignty, which means that when the international community feels a responsibility, when there is a genocide or a war somewhere, perhaps to intervene, that these countries are against it because they say we should respect um, sovereignty because they have a history behind them where they have seen a lot of interference of European countries. So we have seen the debate about Libya, you see the debate about Syria now, and these emerging powers are all against intervention. Whereas European or American uh, politicians perhaps would argue that we should feel responsible for massive violations of human rights outside of our borders and we cannot be indifferent. Traveling uh, through all these countries and many others, I discovered in a way the vitality, the hidden vitality of European societies. Because if you come to think of it, you know, what characterizes a lot of these emerging powers is great inequality, great disparities between the rich and the poor, um, corruption is one of the defining elements of these societies in a sense that the rule of law is very uh, uh, weakly developed. You see um, questions arising around how these societies deal with ethnic relations. So you suddenly discover all kinds of um, what I describe as a hidden vitality of Europe, that perhaps if you make the trip around Europe and look at Europe from the outside, that you suddenly see that one of the big problems of Europe is that it's not visible to itself. We never see Europe as a narrative. We always see, you know, what Freud would call the narcissism of small difference. We never weave the national stories of Europe, but also the individual stories of Europe into a narrative of Europe because we're not visible to ourselves. We are only visible from the outside. My name is Paul Scheffer. I'm a professor of European studies at the University of Tilburg. And before 
I was a professor here at the University of Amsterdam um, in the field of urban um, questions. And I've been writing a lot about immigration and I was a correspondent um, in an early time in my career in Paris and Warsaw. So Europe has always been close to my mind and heart. <laughs>